Sarah, great to have you today. Let's start with Musk. And I mean, you got to just ask the question at this point. Is he just try did, did he know it was publicly traded? Is he just trying to poke the bear at this point? I don't think he cares. I think he cares about being a part of internet culture. And right now, a lot of the internet culture that you're hearing is people who are frustrated with Manu's ownership. The fans are frustrated. They haven't had a great season in a long time. So they're talking about it online. So he wants to be a part of the conversation. I don't think he cares that much. I think the last time he got in trouble for a tweet like that in 2018, the SEC essentially slapped him on the wrist with a $20 million fine and said some lawyers should review your Tesla tweets. So it doesn't matter if it's publicly traded or not to Elon Musk. He is not worried about the consequences of this tweet. So he doesn't mind if he gets slapped on the wrist again or worse? No, he doesn't mind at all. I think Elon Musk right now is really focused on being the internet culture meme king that he is. Mm -hmm. And this was a joke that he thought was funny, so he wanted to put it out there and rally up his mm -hmm. fans. He doesn't worry about what the SEC has to say. Yeah, well, he has an interesting sense of humor. Um, <laughs> Bed Bath and Beyond Belief. This stock keeps, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a rocket ship. It goes up a lot, like, like 92 percent week to date. <laughs> that would be a lot. Um, how is that possible? Where does that money come from that can catapult? Or is it simply that the float of shares is so small that it doesn't take all that much money to, to send it to the moon? Well, I'll tell you where I don't think it comes from. I don't think this is all retail traders moving this stock. I think right now this is a bunch of hedge funds who are trying to figure out what's the best way to capitalize on that. And you do have some retail traders from Wall Street bets trying to get in on it. But I don't think this is the same thing as GameStop. I think this is a little bit more institutional. But you're right when you call it Bed Bath & Beyond. This stock obviously shouldn't be trading where it is. It's the latest example of the mean stock warfare. I think what's so notable about it, though, is that it's kind of going at it alone right now. When you saw this with GameStop, we had AMC last year. There's a bunch of them. We haven't had this for a while. And it's interesting that Bed Bath & Beyond is the one that's making the mean stock mark. Any hunch as to why that's true? I mean, it could be that because the person who has that vested interest in it, Ryan Cohen, who was the chairman, uh, is the chairman of GameStop, you know, had a position in Bed Bath earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And then there was a little bit of a change in the number of outstanding shares that made it look like his position was more inflated recently. You know, that could have been sparking a little bit of the retail fervor as well as some of the hedge fund movement. But other than that, I just think it's along for the ride. All right, let's move along to Apple, Sarah, which has been just an incredible story. You know, down at the lows in the 130s, a lot of debate about where it was going it has been leading the market down and then leading the market higher. And now um, now you got a split. You've got some like Carter Worth, the technician, saying sell it. Uh, you've got others, uh, Daniel Shea last hour saying chase it. New uh, high price targets on the street. We spoke to Dan Ives. He says, uh, you know, it's, go it's going to 200 and not looking back. Yeah, I tend to agree with Dan Ives. I think that the guidance that they provided for Q4, that they expect iPhone sales to continue momentum, would make me very bullish on Apple's stock right now. The concern with Apple, of course, is that their reliance on manufacturing in China would impact uh, sales because of the supply chain issues there. Clearly, that has not been an issue, and there hasn't been as much of an issue with demand. I also think with Apple, what's notable is that they're very cautious about how they talk to the street. You'll recall in April, they warned that some of these macroeconomic issues might impact their stock. Well, take a look at what happened. When investors saw that it wasn't as bad as they thought, it's almost like they rewarded Apple, right? And so I think that the momentum is still there for the company. The concern for Apple, if you want to take the bearish look, obviously foreign exchange headwinds are going to continue for a company like Apple. And then they also said that they're being impacted in their services business, things like advertising because mm -hmm. of the macroeconomics impacting advertising. But personally, I don't think that those cons outweigh the pros. I think Apple is on its way to 200.